back making another video. A lot of you guys are fast for the 100s as that's the stake that you guys are playing. So I decided to record a live play. I will make an effort to kind of play my hand first and then talk about it. So I actually play well. It's hard to do play while talking about your thought process, playing three tables of Zoom at the same time. Let's play some good poker, look for some exploits, and we will certainly talk about them. Can go for a seed bit with this hand, doesn't care at all if it gets check raised. Can fold him off of better hands. Turn, easy check. I beat a bunch of his ace highs and smaller pairs. Seen this player over bluff me for um, using over bets. Actually, I caught him bluffing a few times. I think specifically on the six, I'm going to fold. Yeah, he's going to have hands like queen jack and queen 10 with one diamond, but he's going to have all the flushes. Um, five, seven gets there. His six, seven and six, five make a pair, which he's not going to bluff. And to this line, I don't expect him to turn enough three and four X into a bluff, which I would need him to do for me to call there. So I will just fold. That's recreational. Just bet to basically a value bet. Also can deny some equity. Going for a very small bet with a high frequency on this board. Turn, we have an easy check. And remember, we have a fold. We block some King Jack suited and Jack 10 suited type hands. I'm going to have plenty of ASEX, so this line. Gonna bluff this. Whatever. Don't think this player basically never has a king when he checks back or a flush. So he's either gonna have a, a river five if he bets top pair on the flop, or he's gonna be folding basically. So I think it's a profitable bluff. Here, uh, I don't think that my opponent has. Too much value to this line, but he's still going to have flush draws. And this is just not a hand in my range that I'm interested in fighting with. me. Um, we're going to go with this hand. We're gonna... Very small sizing. I don't think that checking makes a lot of sense in these tight range formations as I don't think he's just going to start blasting off with a hand like pocket sevens. Um, I also think that he's going to have eights and nines and ace jack at a high frequency there, and a lot of those hands are just going to be looking to check down, and they will call some small bets at some frequency, so 
think even though I have top set, just with the positions and the type of board, it's still better for me to just bet myself and try to build a pot. against the snap checks, just looking to show down. I'm going to three bet this sometimes. Not this time. Just going to fold into recreational. Going to check raise his hand. It's a nice check raise as mainly an equity denial bet. And then it can also turn and barrel some different runouts that improve me on like straightening cards that can get him to fold some better hands. It also really punishes people who are over C bidding those kind of boards. It's going to be a reasonable check raise in theory as well. Betting the button versus the cutoff is going to be one of the most profitable spots in the game tree for you if you can play it well. So the more hands that you learn how to play profitably in that situation, the better your win rate's going to be. I'd open this if the recreational was in the big blind, but he was on the button there. Four bet. I think about this spot as I play situation. A6 specifically, my hand is strong enough for a value bet on the river. He's still going to have other 6x, pocket 5s, 4x, and 3s, and ace highs. Typically in these types of scenarios, you want to do quite a bit of checking when you have showdown value, like a pair plus the ace, because you unblock his check back range, therefore he's going to have more bluffs. I would 3-bet this against uh, some recreationals if I could get more information to know how wide he is. Um, I'm actually still going to take it. Ace has a slam dunk 3-bet here. Um, ace 9. I think that it's still going to be profitable, especially when you flop top two. But um, I just think that he's not going to put enough pressure on me or four bet me enough, so I can just get away with three betting too way too loose of a range than theory would suggest. I'm going to go for a small bet on the flop. I also I think one of the reasons why um, three betting basically anything that's playable against a recreational is going to be profitable is they're just simply not going to be able to check raise buffing you nearly as often as they should. 
and you can do a lot of sizing manipulation with uh, depending on the hand that you have to kind of get them to continue when you want them to and get them to fold when you want them to. Ace King, not a board that I'm going to be C-betting too high for frequency. Um, it's going to hit these players' ranges a lot. My hand would hate to get blown off of its equity. I think something like, something like that makes sense here with the two dead callers. Uh, my hand just going to check call. Not particularly exciting, but I think it just is a call. I would be looking to lead on some cards for sure. It's going to go very high frequency bet in this situation. Um, this hand is going to go into that range. And on the turn, my hand is just going to be a check and check fold as I block the bluffing region. Ace King, I'm not going to bluff in this line against the recreational. I think they're going to put me on way too many Ace King and Ace Queens. I'm also not going to check call as I believe that their bluffing range of the King, Queen, and lower flush draws are going to barrel the turn himself. And here I would check the turn with plenty of Ace X hands always pocket aces, so my range is entirely defended. And when I have this hand, he just gets to win. Really important to know your ranges in those types of scenarios, especially when, you know, if you ever feel like you're getting run over, maybe you're on a downswing or something, it's easy for players to kind of want to get sticky in those types of scenarios and, and have that emotional attachment to, oh man, Pocket queens, I, I got like 23 big blinds in pre-flop with some dead money. It should be a very profitable spot for me. And then, of course, I get the ace high board. And uh, you shouldn't look at things like that at all. Just look at your range. Figure out where you're at in your range and the ranges at play. And just make the best decision from there. Okay. I will roll a four bet which we do. This was a mistake. I didn't mean to bet this small. Um, I get punished. Not a big deal. Um, this is interesting. So he bets smaller than one third. I think I need to call. Against one third, my hand would fold, but against the smaller than one third, I believe I need to call. It's going to be close either way. I think in practice, it'll be a fine to call. This is a hand that I'm definitely going to be checking the turn back with. Okay, this this is not a good play by him. He certainly wants to be polarizing on the turn. This is not the hand that I want to be bluffing him with. Uh, especially with a ten of spades, I think that that could be in, within his bluffing range. But this is just going to make things way too easy for the majority of my range, and it's also going to take out hands in his checking range that he's going to want to have. Like if he's betting, um, if he's saying there basically that he's betting a like a weakish ace x for that sizing but that hand class needs to be put into his checking range. Otherwise, his pocket nines through kings region are going to be extremely vulnerable if he's betting all his aces on the turn when he checks. I'm, I'm going to definitely would be looking to attack that size with certain hands, but like I said, um, just that, that hand class is not, not the one. I would rather attack him on the turn with a hand like four or five suited or five six suited kind of unblocking these high card bluffs that he can have 
while having equity to the nuts. Pure four bet. We go a little bit bigger because we're a little bit deeper. I think we just need to fold um, in these positions. Even with the queen high backdoor flush draw, it's just the board's too dry and his rank, he's from early position. It's too weak to continue. I'm gonna open this with a recreational. This is a board that my opponent should not be C betting nearly as often as I think that he is. Easy call on the flop. Easy call on the turn. And I'm going to make an exploitative play depending on his sizing on the river. And if I can discount him having sixes or 3x, I think I'm going to jam my hand and try to get him up with a chop. Definitely going to do that. I don't think that he's going to choose sixes or the 3x in this size. He's going to pick a, a larger size. So I think that we can kind of free roll him off of a chop against certain players for sure. I'll you bet. Roll the four bet. And with his tanking, we 100% got him off with an ace X, which is a huge win for us. A lot of these guys in these games are going to have very blatant sizing tells and timing tells and just kind of I'm going to open this with the recreational and the big blind off 30 blinds because I think it can make some players through but me tighter uh, afraid that this guy is going to get it in with his you know whatever he pocket fours because he's got 30 big blinds and then it lets me play heads up against the recreational with a hand that's going to have reasonable equity against his range so just a good spot to have a dynamic range. Being a bit deeper, I'm going to take this. My hand can call the 4-bet. And I, I like how 4-bet pots are played uh, when I'm in position in most zoom pools. I think that uh, players make a lot of mistakes and they leave a lot of their ranges very vulnerable. Yeah, we have a recreational button limp. Definitely going to isolate my hand. Here, I think it's important to go big, as if he's going to call 3x or call 5x. Um, on this board, going to 
that's small. Give him a chance to get in there with some hands that he should not. Poor deuce is too weak. I think just a two-thirds sizing is appropriate. He's going to have hands like ace, four of diamonds, etc. Having no spade and having queens and sevens, I think we're going to go for this one. Sizing, we're saying that we have a jack or better um, with the sizing I'm going to choose, which is going to be double pot. Likely range bet from this player on this board. Could consider raising. Um, likely doing extremely well in equity with his hand against his strategy, but I'd rather call. I think it's better. I'm going to call here. Actually, no, I think we just play the regular. So. Check. Go small. Uh, polarizing on the river to an ace or better. Frequency, I'm going to go for high frequency bet here. Basically, trying to protect my hand when he has a hand like Queen Jack of Diamonds. Easy turn call. I just don't think I can fold a pair yet with this. Gonna trap the turn. I've got. He has a bunch of hands that are completely drawing dead. Turn. I'm gonna bluff, trying to get him up with a smaller pair. Wherever my hand's gonna give up with this combo. Here, I think he has a bunch of ace. Ace highs. I think he's going to overfold if I jam. I'm going to go for an exploitative sizing that I think he might just call his ace highs. Um, I think his sevens through nines and jacks would, um, he's going to have those hands sometimes for sure, but I think, so he does have the nines. Um, those hands, from his perspective, he should be betting himself a lot more often. So I think that my sizing is kind of nice because those sevens through jacks region are going to pure call. And then when I choose this sizing, he might get confused and call me with a lot more of his ace queen and ace jack hands where if I jam, I think that those hands are going to fold almost always, maybe always.
pretty easy fold against the size. I don't even think I get to continue there against a third. Easy call here. Just gonna have a bunch of jack x and then hands like eight nine, queen ten. Turn, I think that I'm supposed to just pull her, I can just pull her right into a jack basically. Here on this board, we're going to size up with this hand and just find a bit larger on this board anyway. Um, we'll go half though. I'm trying to think. I think he's very capped here to basically he always has like queen jack, maybe some jack 10. Um, I think if I jam, I'm just going to get too many folds without any reads here, without any information. So we're just going to choose a smaller size. And his when he does have a hand like jack eight, he's going to likely jam himself. But I think he just has way too many queen jack and uh, jack 10 when he takes this line. So he's got to get the jack nine, the weak jacks. And like I said, um, in theory, I'm supposed to jam here, but I think that he's just going to overfold without any information based off the way that he kind of played his hand and uh, his timing basically turns his hand completely face up. Here, um, board that I'm going to be betting more often than I should. Uh, we're also deep, so I definitely want to fill the pot. It's kind of tempting to, to check here, uh, but betting quarter pot is also a fine play. We'll do uh, one more interesting spot and then I will wrap up the video. Here. Jack seven. Here I think my hand's worth uh, two streets. Against the way the players actually play. I think my bluffs can also just bet that size. I'm gonna have a bunch of different draws. And I can check some lower pairs there for my check calling range. I'm actually going to fold this. I think that this is not... Without any reads, I think that uh, players are certainly under three betting the big blind against under the gun, and I'm just running into a range where I'm just too dominated too often. I'd rather call a hand there like 7-8 suited than queen-10 suited, because my pairs, my queen-x are going to be dominated with all of his three bets, like king-queen and ace-queen. Yeah, this, this hand here is just an example of having exploitative sizing. And uh, you might say, well, why not jam? You know, you have the nuts, and he could call with a hand like this. And you're right, he could. And my response is just going to be that, you know, how many millions of hands I've played in poker, that I have a good understanding of where players tend to overfold and overcall. And this is going to be a node where players are going to massively overfold to the large river bet on this card specifically as from his perspective he's going to understand that 10-9 gets there and 8-9 is now going to make a pair so he will show down against a player who is a calling station or a player that you have very you know you have aggressive history with that will call you 
in these types of spots with a hand like Jack-9, then it would be a large mistake to not jam. So it's just very important to have a dynamic range to put into different sizings depending on what you believe that your opponent's going to do, rather than just try to follow a solver output. Very small through that. We'll get in there with them. We're not, we're not even going to roll it. Um, I think this is a fine play. It's a hand that doesn't really care if it gets jammed on. Suited queen high, it's going to be four bet at, at some frequency. And when we're this deep, I think that I'm facing a polarized range uh, to the small sizing, where he's either going to have like another part of his range, or he's going to have a tweener hand that I can get him to fold or put a lot of pressure on him post flop, and totally fine. It's not like my hand had a bunch of equity or anything anyway. Turn. I'm going to have much better bluff candidates to choose from. I'm just going to check. Same thing with the a6. I'm going to have plenty of bluffs. 7, 8, 3, 4, 4, 6, queen, jack, jack, 8, some deuce x. Having a 6 isn't great here, so I'd rather check. And I'm just going to check down here and lose uh, in order 9. This makes things interesting. He's going to have a lot of jack eight. I think I'm going to call this. Um, I just expect my opponent to have too many jack eight, seven eight, queen jack, and king jack to this sizing and not enough naked 10x. Obviously, he'll have a nine, but um, totally fine. I just think he's going to have too many bluffs. Clear value bit on the river. Especially if he's taking out um, a bunch of the, the 10x to this line, to, to the overbet on the river. I think that a lot of players are going to be overbluffing that line. I still, in reality, he still might be for sure. Just you know, he had the value region that time. I'm gonna play a theoretically poor bet sizing here. Just think that uh, it's gonna work out well in reality um, with how I play my ranges and what I know that he's gonna do with certain parts of his range. So we kind of, I'm actually kind of hoping that he raises here, because if he raises here with this combo, he's going to get 3-bet and he's going to fold at a very high frequency. Basically, this combo is nice to bluff 3-bet because I unblock all of his bluffs, which are going to be the backdoor flush draw hands himself, and he's also very unlikely to have... much value in this line if you, if you were to check raise as he's not going to have the sets at nearly as high of a frequency as he might think slash he's not going to check raise them as often as he might think on the flop let's check down and quick check opening with a recreational in the Big blind. Nice hand to start betting, can get him to fold better high cards. Have equity. Speaking of equity. Okay, so here is very important to size correctly and well.
Okay, so against this, I don't think that he's going to be bluffing his pairs as often as he's going to just have uh, the two pair or the 8x. And I don't want, I don't want a uh, scare card to come on the river. So if a nine hits or if a flush card hits or if it pairs, I don't want him to get away. That being said, I wish if I had more time, I made it a little bit smaller. I made it a uh, 3x so I could like 3x his raise. So I could target when he has a 3x, which I think he'll have a decent bit in this line. But it's, it's very important to definitely raise there when you have the clubs as when he has an 8x, you're free rolling him for his entire stack. Also, specifically 10-8 as well, if he has a, an 8x, you have the 9 as well to give you the highest rate. So definitely a turn raise. I just wish that the, I made just a slightly smaller, but I didn't have any time. We'll do one more hand. I don't think that hand's particularly interesting. Okay, here we should have dynamic sizings. So this is a board where I think he's gonna fold his deuces through sevens region when he has it almost regardless of our size. So I think it's better to just size up so that when he has the pocket nines or any the queen X or the king 10 or ace 10 or clubs, that we start building a bigger pot. Gonna get in here with the recreational. at this time. Turn don't like my hand as a bluff. Um, it's a good bet on the flop as I can get him to fold some like pocket twos to threes potentially and I can barrel on a bunch of different runouts to get him to fold other types of hands but on the seven I don't think that my hand's going to function as a good bluff. I think that I'm blocking the hands that I want him to fold like queen ten and queen eight and queen x of clubs. On the river however I think it is a mandatory bluff Recreationals are going to put you on ace king here a ton. Um, I, I don't expect to get called light. I'm also realistically going to have a king at a decent frequency. Um, you're going to get folds here very often by hands like this. Um, I'm not positive if this player is a recreational. Uh, it's possible that um, it's possible that he's not. He was just short stack at one of the tables. But either way, it's a, definitely a good bluff. I'm still going to have king nine, queen ten, king jack, ace king, king queen. And a call. Going to raise. This board's probably, this player is probably over receiving this board. We'll stop on these hands. Easy call on the flop. I'm just going to play my hands first and we'll talk about it after. My sizing here. I guess I'm saying that I feel that small with certain hands. We're going to go small here. I could still 
still have a 7x. One second. We'll talk about these hands. Just based off the sizing, um, I'm going to end up calling because he could have his queen jack and king jack region just trying to get me to fold some ace highs, but there's a very imbalanced sizing to value specifically in this line, I think. But for the price that I'm getting, I can't be confident enough in this situation to fold this hand as I am going to have a bunch of bluffs myself. But this to me looks like a, bu a bunch of ace nine suited and 10x like a king 10 suited. I don't think my hand's a good jam. So I'd rather just call. And I'm just, I'm going to lose often, but I'm supposed to for this price. And I'm just going to win enough of the time where he has the suited broadways to make this call better than folding. Okay, so he has the ace queen here, which is a very poor block, which is kind of why we know that in general we're going to lose when they take this sizing, but we still have to call, we just play our ranges. Um, this is a very poor bluff on his part with that sizing, as for that sizing, he's basically trying to specifically target ace king, but even then, like to target ace king, he should be choosing a larger sizing. So that's probably like the nut worst combo for him to have for that sizing. Um, yeah, just, and then to talk about this hand, flop, check raise, we're representing three X, pocket fours, pocket fives, pocket, like all the pocket pairs um, and seven X. On the turn, I think that I can have two sizings. I can bet large and say that I have a three or a seven and then put in some bluffs like this. Or what I chose to do was bet small and say, I'm still interested in value betting a like my three X, my pocket fours, pocket fives, pocket eights, pocket nines, and pocket tens. And I have to sprinkle in some of my traps as well so that my range isn't vulnerable to total like to just have those hands and, and I will do that so my range will be intact there so we do that and then on the river I think that within those ranges that are called on the turn that my eight is worth a block and again I will have some seven x and pocket threes and some nutted combinations sprinkled into the sizing so that you can't just raise me and I'm folding my entire range Okay, guys, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and you guys learned something, and I hope that you guys are having a great day, and I will see you in the next one.